and there we go. All right, so welcome. Um, so we're gonna be talking about strategies and tools to encourage discussion and mainly written and verbal discussion. Um, and this was, uh, I built this in, with the help of Cassandra McCarthy, who is a, I believe she's a library media student working with Melissa Tom at Bristow uh, Middle School. And as part of a project, she and I were, she helped me um, with a couple of the ideas that we brainstormed here. And uh, I was hoping she'd be able to join me, but I think she, I knew she had another engagement this afternoon. So today I would like to present several strategies to you for encouraging student discussion and using these discussion boards or using a discussion board. Not really talking about a specific one, but I'll be presenting mainly using one. And also talk a little bit about the tools that you could use to employ these strategies. But hopefully they could, you could use a variety of tools. You, you shouldn't have to be stuck on a tool to do to use some of these things. And to start, what I'd like you to do is go to the Jamboard and, tab and click on slide number three. And if you don't know how to navigate, way up at the top in the center, there are left and right arrows. Just go to slide number three. And on this slide, what I want you to do is there's a question there. And my question to you is this. Uh, individuals, it, it's do you strongly agree, agree, disagree, or strongly disagree with this statement? Individuals can choose their own destiny. The choices are not dictated or limited by the constraints of society. And all I need you to do is on the left hand side, you'll see an arrow. And under the arrow is a sticky note tool. So go ahead and click on that stick, sticky note tool one time. Oh, sure. Um, under that sticky note tool is a, uh, or click on the sticky note tool. And then what I'd like you to do is type your name on that. And then just place it in the quadrant that mostly aligns with your beliefs. And those of you who love going on lines, don't go on the lines. All right, how are we doing? I'm not counting how many people are here, but looking like uh, we're pretty close. All right, while people are still thinking, uh, can I have someone who, I see like we've got three different areas. No one strongly disagreed with this, but we do have two people who strongly agreed. Does anyone in strongly agreed want to share why you strongly agree with this uh, statement? Uh, this is this is Sue. Um, I guess I've always felt that people have more control than they think they do. Um, you don't have total control. I get that. But I think you have a lot more, at least in my life, I'll speak from first person. I feel like when I have tried to control the situation and and kind of take control of my own destiny, it has worked out for me. Nice. All right. Thank you. Um, someone who disagrees, someone want to share why they disagree with this. Uh, go ahead, hand raiser person, Danielle. I just wanted to be a good student and show that I could <laughs> raise my hand. I disagreed because I guess I put myself in the context of what's going on in our, you know, with our district goal and, and in the society and, and what's going on. And I think that sometimes, you know, we can have the best intentions, but there's just obstacles that are beyond people's control. And, and you know, you can, you know, a, a child or, you know, I'm thinking about our adolescents are coming from trauma that they can't control. And, and so I, I would love to think in an ideal world that we can control things, but I think unfortunately there are some things that, you know, we just don't have the choice in, so. All right, 
Thanks. I'm not going to make everybody comment, but this is something you could do with students. This is one example of a way you can um, use this kind of graphic. The kids can graphically represent where they stand on an issue. Tell them um, after you put it there, come up with three or four reasons why you believe what you do. And um, one thing I could do is I could have formed four breakout rooms at this point and in my in my uh, meet form the breakout rooms, put the kids into the breakout rooms to discuss, come up with uh, three solid reasons they all agree on, and then come back to the group and present. Um, if you did not get in the chat, I'm going to post it again, but um, I have posted the uh, link to the Jamboard that we are all working on right now. Um, very good. Yeah, so this is, like I said, this is one tool. It's called Four Corners. Some of you probably already use it in your classroom. Can I see hands if you've used it before? Ah, I'm going to get to that. You know, <laughs> very good question. So um, I'm going to. If you want to go back, please go back to the gym or just to, just so you can see where I am. Or actually, I'm so, I'm sorry. Stay back in the meet. Stay back in the meet here. Um, so again, you want to ask a question that requires students to take a position. Students place their name on a sticky note. They move it to corresponding corner. You can resize. I don't know if you noticed. You can resize and also twist around your sticky notes. And from here, again, you can put them in a breakout room. One tip I'm going to give you that I just learned yesterday about breakout rooms. In breakout rooms, I have been dragging students from the main class down to each room by hand. And I didn't know, Hera, that you could type the kid's name in. <laughs> so you can actually click on, a you set how many breakout rooms you want. You can rename the breakout room. And then you can just type the kids' names in. And that was new to me yesterday after a really painful first experience with breakout rooms. So I was dragging and I couldn't see the bottom box to put them in and they wouldn't go there. So I hope that helps some people who are doing the same thing I did. And hopefully you weren't because it's so painful. Um, now I had a great question about how do you make a template like this? How do you get the lines in the background? This, you'll notice when I asked you to answer on this slide, um, and one person did find out that this is all one piece. It was all one movable piece because I set, I set up the template first. I'm going to show you a little bit of how to, how to do that. Um, so here you'll notice this is actually made up of pieces. I've got text boxes. I had a couple of sticky notes and I have other text boxes here. The first thing I did was um, um, when I click outside of the slide up here, you can see there's a set background control. And here I've got a lot of choices for backgrounds. I have dots, I have blue lines, I have a blue graph, I have a, a graph with a darker background, I have a solid blue, what they call a blue board, a chalkboard, and now uh, a, a way to put an image in the background. That's, that's new as of a couple hours ago, I think. <laughs> because when I was making this presentation this morning, I was finishing, putting the finishing touches on this, that wasn't there. And this has suddenly appeared. So either I just didn't notice it, but, but um, so once, once I put all of this together, if I want to make this into a template, what I'm going to do is uh, and fix all these pieces so the student, the fewer moving parts, the less likely students are to move it around. So once I have everything in place that I want students to respond to, I go up to the top right corner where there's three dots. And I'm going to go save frame as image. So it takes a picture of this, it saves it in my hard drive, and then I would go to an empty, uh, I'll go to an empty one here, and then I would go to my images, and I would browse through my hard drive and find it in my list of, usually it's going to be under downloads, and I'll just take this one here, this is from my last session. And then once you find, once you locate the, the uh, image, you can just paste it here. Uh, I will have some ready-made templates for you. Also links to lots and lots of other templates that you can use. So prior to using a Jamboard or another shared document with students, you really need to set expectations for students. You want to make sure that they're going to use it appropriately. You're going to make sure that um, to, to get them to get the most out of it. So I'd like you to go to Jam, the Jamboard slide number seven and choose just one of these topics, either set expectation, setting expectations for participation, setting expectations for use of the tools, or setting expectations for comments, written and spoken discussion. Just pick one, create one sticky note, um, and put an expectation there we should have for students. 
and then stick it in the correct category. And it'd be ideal if you color coded it the same color as my sticky note. So while people are working, does anyone have any comments on using the sticky note itself? Can you see uh, the good and bad of them? The only thing I notice is that when I start my sticky note, mine is like under everybody else's. Mm. So I have to kind of like move it around to find the one that was mine because they kind of stack up, at right. least that's what it seems on my end. Yeah. yeah. Also, um, I don't know if you noticed, resizing them, it can be a little bit of a pain if you don't know how. So uh, if you click on a sticky note, you can move the bottom corners to, uh, to uh, enlarge the sticky note or shrink it. And then the top left corner one lets you twist it to make it look a little bit fancy. Very nice, stay on topic. Yeah, I'm seeing in the chat, uh, Michael, if many people respond, it may not be room to post overlap, yes. So squishing them down and then enlarging them as, as students present them would be a good way to do this. Uh, just to let you know, you can only have, uh, you can only, you can have up to 50 participants in a Jamboard. Um, so another way around the issues that you're running into, if we've got a lot, um, you may want to open up another page, like have several pages with the same question. If you had a large class of 50 kids, uh, heaven forbid, <laughs> um, but yeah, cre create another page for kids to respond and then go through all the responses. The, limita the other limitation of, um, Jamboard is you can only have 20 pages. So it's 50 respondents and 20 pages in a Jamboard presentation. I did write this down on my cheat sheet so you know, so you will know that and I will be giving you a cheat sheet on, on Jamboard. So those notes are there. Uh, yeah, someone's got hands raised. Go ahead and shout out your question. I can't see who. Uh, hi, this is Zheng Jie. I'm just curious if I want to know who post, uh, you know, certain sticky notes. For example, I want to know I got nothing, and I want to know who write this. How can I trace? Yeah, that that's the thing. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> come on. As a student, and the student won't tell you it's me, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's a pro that's one of the downfalls of or the, one of the bad points of Jamboard right now. I think it can happen because if you look at the top right corner of the page, I can see everyone who's participating in this Jamboard right now. I can see in terms of names who's here. I just can't see who did what, and I am hoping that's going to be a feature that comes soon, but is not here now. So one of my requirements is if you're going to post, uh, you have to put your name on it. Uh, and your and your real name, as somebody said here. And if you don't like what they said, you can click on it one time, and there's the three dots at the top right corner, and you can delete it. You can you can delete somebody else's. And actually, that's another rule that should be here in the tool: just don't delete or mess with anybody else's posts. And there are a lot of expectations that you do need to set for students before they they do engage in this work. Dave, I have my hand up. Is the Jamboard? Is there a free version and a non-free version? I, I kind of remember from last year. No, it's all free. It's all free. Okay. It's connected to Google Apps for Education. Yep. Gotcha. Thanks. Yeah. So uh, another use of this is uh, is 
it's similar to the four corners that we did is affinity mapping. Has anyone worked with affinity maps before? Um, I've used this with uh, when, when we did school walkthroughs. Uh, we would get a group of teachers and admin together. We would go through, maybe do classroom observations, and we'd be looking for specific um, specific things. Maybe we're looking at engagement, um, at student engagement, and we were measuring time, and we we're measuring how the students were engaged, how many students were engaged. We take a lot of data, and then you go back with, and you put on your sticky notes one piece of data on st each sticky note, and then you organize them into different groupings. Um, it's a great way, it, it's a great class exercise. Um, one way you can do it, um, there's this Pinterest board that has affinity maps here. And this is actually geared toward younger kids, but you could do it with science facts and grouping science facts. You could do it um, creating a class mission statement. Um, it, so this could be a research tool. It's a great way for kids to think a little bit out of the box, get their all, all their ideas out there and group them. And when we regroup our thinking, it's, it, it, it builds our, it builds our knowledge and um, and our retention of that idea. Another thing you could use is there's this uh, another graphic organizer is called the Freyer model. Um, in the center of the Freyer model, you use the word or the term that you want to define. Uh, on the left hand side, you use actually the top left. You put the textbook definition of the term. On the right hand side, you have students brainstorm the characteristics of that. Uh, on the left-hand side, you have them, uh, left-hand bottom corner, uh, you have them generate examples of that term. And then uh, the more powerful tool of this is the non-examples. And you can generate non-examples of something. It really shows, it, it shows a, a solid um, knowledge of that term. You could do a gallery walk with these. Again, you can only have 20 slides in here, but as, a, as a, an art teacher could have uh, two, two, um, two jam boards open at the same time and share half with some students. Um, you could have students present some work here on the left and then have them reserve the space on the right for comments from classmates. And then you can make, maybe you'd say, I want to require uh, every student to make five comments. I want you to put your name on the comment. I want you to comment on five different uh, pieces of work uh, uh, from your classmates um, and then you know ask them to use things like try rather than make a negative comment tell them to use the word consider like consider consider your facial expression <laughs> consider the clothes that you're wearing there why shouldn't you be more fearful time is melting and you're hanging over this weird edge uh, this this should be terrifying Uh, another use uh, or another graphic organizer is a fishbone diagram uh, where you present the problem at the left hand side and then each of these um, bones represents a uh, cause of the problem. Um, I see got hands raised. Are people, do, does anyone have a question? I just had a quick question about, um, can you put video content on this, like a video in the center and discuss that or is it just photos? Yeah, I have, not, for I have not seen that yet. It's just images right now. All right. Yeah, that would be awesome, though, to be able to get kids to comment on something they've seen. Maybe um, if you had this in a presentation, you know, to to show them have have their responses here. Uh, Dave, yeah. Sue, so I had a quick question. How do you get kids work onto the Jamboard? So it's like, let's say you gave them an assignment in Google Classroom and it was a slide. So then you're just saving mm -hmm. that and dragging it into the Jamboard slide. Is that what we're doing? You, I would take a screenshot of it. OK. Yeah, and then over here on the left-hand side is uh, images. Okay. So you can upload something, you can do it from camera, you can take it right from Google Drive, an image. But a screenshot, I think, would work best. OK, thank you. Yeah. Especially Chromebooks, uh, making a screenshot with a Chromebook now is just two keys, so simple. So again, this is cause and effect analysis. Um, you could use it as a check-in. Um, you could just have check-in and then have students either uh, check in how they're feeling today, if you want to get touchy-feely, or, or what is something that you, you had a hard time understanding with last night's homework, what's an issue you had, what's a success that you had, a way of just, just getting a, um, a pulse of the room as students are walking in. Um, this is... Um, a visual explore exploration of the outsiders, so a student was asked to represent their their thinking of of uh, their picturing of things in uh, in that book. Then diagram, it's a classic. They had, I think, uh, they were invented when I was a kid. So, 
Um, here's something I invented. I'm very proud of this. I'm going to copyright it right after this session. It's called New New Hmm. And one is, what is something you already knew from what you read or um, or what you just learned? What is something that uh, that is totally new to you? And what is something that you've got a question about? Yes, students can add their own image their their own images using this toolbar. Um, the tools that you could you could use to do this, uh, we've got Padlet, um, which is great, but it costs money, and so that's that's a little bit of a problem. But it, I love how they have very uh, they have a lot of different arrangements that you could use that are that would really help out. But you can't add your own background graphic image, so that might be one of the, one of the problems with Padlet. Uh, the free version of Padlet, now I think they only give you two Padlets. Way back when I started, it was brand new, and they gave us like six, which was nice. But they got stingy, as as money called. Nearpod has a collaboration board. Um, I, I just find it, students aren't able to manipulate the the, um, the Post-its as well. I think it's they're, they're, there's only two ways of ordering them. I think it's like by, by who posted first. You can do it by time, or I think you could do it by... Um, I remember time, I can't remember what the other one was, but there's one other way of, of, of organizing them, but it doesn't give the students the freedom to organize or reorganize. And you can also do it in Google Slides if you wanted. You could create the same shape over and over again, very quickly add squares, and then a student would just grab one of these squares, double click on it, and they can type right onto it. So there's several tools you could do this in. Again, pitfalls, we talked about some of these. Um, it says here you can't make an item in a, a background anymore, but um, but now it seems like you can. So they made some changes already, and hopefully make the changes that we want. Especially, I think the most important one is being able to tell who posted what. That for me would be like the first thing they should change. So I'm going to post now in the chat a link to my notes from this presentation. It gives a little bit better explanation of. Um, of some of the models like the affinity mapping and the FRAIR model, uh, a link to a website um, that will tell you a little bit more about it. And also some protocols that I did not discuss. Um, and then I have at the bottom, I have uh, something that says other resources. And under those other resources, I have a Jamboard cheat sheet. So I tell you how every tool works, how to use it. Um, I give you a presentation of this gem. It automatically forces you to make your own copy so it's yours. I also have uh, a link to a GM that has already been used and feel free to write on it and destroy it and just try try things out. Um, Janet McNeese, who's a media specialist at Sedgwick, has a lot of amazing resources that she's put together. She did a lot of specific Jamboard presentations over the summer. And I have a, a wakelet that she formed that has lots of access to lots of templates and also her Jamboard on how to Jamboard. And then there's 10 templates from Ditch That Textbook. If you don't know Ditch That Textbook, uh, and hybrid learning is like one of the things that will save your life. They have just so many ideas on, on, do, on doing things with students uh, using computers. And then finally, there's five new twists for online discussions, um, which is just necessary now in our hybrid model. So I hope you found something that was useful in this time. And if not, I hope I at least kept you awake and enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Dave.